imagine being 40. Imagine being 50 as Kill me. Cork. Kill me. Kill me. Kill me. I'm Kill done. Me. Just yeah. get me out of here. Throw me into yeah. a volcano. Please. <laughs> <laughs> On the you big know, island. That's yeah, where the big you island. Go, right? Yeah, big Mauna island. Kea. Bye. Throw me into Mauna yeah. Kea. <laughs> and we're good. Welcome to It Gets Late Early. Uh, today I have with me someone who I would call more of like a cultural icon, perhaps, like of the millennial <laughs> generation. Uh, some of you will actually know him quite well by just looking at that, you know, little logo behind his head slash his face. There we go. Uh, but I have Ross Pomerantz, also known as Corporate Bro or Quirk with me here today. And if you don't know who he is, well, that's on you. But we're going to go ahead and welcome him and let him tell us a little bit about who he is, what he does, who Corp is, why we why we are here today, and what is in store for the future. So walk us walk us through a little bit about you, if you can. A little bit about me. Oh, God, you're asking a salesperson <laughs> to talk a little bit about themselves. Yeah. <laughs> we need a lot of time for this. Um, who am I? Uh, I'm, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, originally born and really? mostly raised. Uh, I'm a huge uh, Atlanta sports, or I should say Atlanta Braves fan. Uh, growing up, I thought I wanted to be a baseball player. I still want to be a baseball player. I was a <laughs> baseball player. Uh, I didn't make it to the major leagues. I got stuck in the lowest level of minor leagues. Um, you know, pitched in college, had no idea what I wanted to do. Like every And like every washed up athlete, I ended up in a sales role. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of, I guess, where my life really began, I, I should say. I started making videos when I was working at Oracle as as we discussed earlier, a business development consultant. I was a consultant of sorts. It turned out <laughs> I didn't know what that meant on the way in. It turned out it was sales. And the rest is kind of history. I That's where I started making videos in 20... I want to say I probably started making them in 2013-ish, like for fun, back when Vine was a thing. Oh um, but with no R. intent. I, yeah, RIP. Bless it. You know, so yeah. I wish you were here. Uh, now it's TikTok. So. <laughs> For worse or for for much worse. Um, I'm, I'm going to say worse for sure. Yeah, definitely for worse. It's, mm -hmm. I hate that. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of started taking it seriously in 2015. That was when it all kind of shifted for me. That was the first time I I got evidence, I should say, that it, what I was doing resonated with people other than like my team and my friends. Uh, I was always the kid grew up making home movies, and uh, no one ever pushed me towards comedy or push me towards uh, creative stuff. I just kind of grew up thinking if I didn't make it in baseball, I'd be successful in business. And I didn't know what, what that meant. I, that was just kind of what I thought. Uh, so over time, I realized sales is kind of the same across the world. You know, whether it doesn't matter the language, the industry, uh, the, the geo, it's like everybody hates marketing. Everybody thinks their quota is too high. Everything, <laughs> everyone thinks the product sucks and everyone wants to make a bunch of money, like universal. So I, I kind of stumbled into it. I, people asked me if I like had this grand plan, grand master plan to like be an influencer. And I fucking can't stand the word influencer. It's really uh, bad. It's, it's an terrible. awful, it's a derogatory term to me, <laughs> uh, the I word. And so that's it. I mean, uh, since then I've been making content, trying to make uh, at least one video a week. I, I've probably missed a handful of weeks every now and then I'll repost something just because new people haven't seen the old stuff and uh, that's it. No, I do a lot of other shit too, but that's, that's the short that's a short version in a mere three and a half minutes. I love it. I'm also curious to go back in time a little bit and hear a little bit more about your time at Oracle versus, I think it was Rhea Glassdoor. Is that yeah. one of your early videos? Yeah. yeah. I want to hear about the sales cultures at both of those organizations. Yeah. I mean, Oracle, that's where I got my, that was my first real tech sales job. I had done like a real estate kind of apartment leasing type thing before that. But Oracle was my first venture into tech and, and Oracle has a lot of, has a reputation, a lot of stereotypes, and they're all true. Uh, you know, I think Oracle is a bit of a meat grinder. Uh, I was in a building, I was in HQ, which was Redwood Shores down south of San Francisco. And we were in this building called Twin Dolphin. That was the, the street was Twin Dolphin. You see these Twin beautiful Dolphin. like database buildings uh, from the freeway. You're like, damn, that campus looks nice. But what you don't realize <laughs> is where all the salespeople are, they're in the shithole across the street called Twin Dolphin. It's like a frat house. Um, <laughs> smells like coffee and shit and burritos, <laughs> like breakfast burritos. And then like, it was a great time, honestly. Like I'm early in my career. I'm in a building with 3,000 salespeople. Yeah, be, right? But everybody in that building was like 20 to 40 years old. Yeah. Like it was actually younger than, than you'd think. This was like, you know, they had this program called Class Of where all the recent college grads from like Cal Poly and UCSB yeah. and other places would just get fed yeah. into this thing. And you just see them churn and burn every now and then. Like a <laughs> few desks would empty up. You're like, yeah, they're you know, gone. Like, Got pipped. 
<laughs> yeah, they got pipped. They just quit. They're like, sales ain't for me. They last like two months. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, and they just bail. And you just, you kind of see people weed themselves out. But it was fun. I mean, like, you know, that's where I started doing Corporate Bro. It was just weird to look around and be like, how, how are these people who don't understand this technology, like closing million dollar deals with Fortune 100 companies? You know, it was a weird world. Good to and, be. you know, party hard and, and work hard. And everybody kind of was bonded under the hatred for what they do and <laughs> themselves. You know, like yeah. nothing, nothing bonds people like shared misery. So true. You know, misery so loves company. It does. And that's, that's where a lot of the inspiration for my videos came from was, was that time at Oracle, which I, I wouldn't trade. I think like, it, you know, it's like, I, I sound like a boomer. It's like, oh, it's who made me who I am. Like I mean, everyone should go through that. Everyone should have to go through that. And they should, like, they should have to go through that. I think, um, Glassdoor was a lot less intense. Glassdoor was like the epitome of one of those progressive tech companies that like, it was very chill. It was very fun. Some of my best friends are from there. You know, it wasn't like a high earner place. Like I went from selling like a single seat, a single proc of database was 50K. Like average deal size of Glassdoor was like 5K. Like, and you need, and you had to have two procs of database you had. So it was a hundred K basically. Um, that's what it was. And so I admittedly felt like there was a, there was a step in between there. And there's a reason I went to Glassdoor. I went to, I left Oracle to go to a startup where I like doubled my base and doubled my depression by, <laughs> I tripled my depression. Like I was miserable. I had to be in the office at 7am. I was living in the city. It was oh in Mountain View. I was commuting an hour and a half through darkness every morning. Like I, like people complain about their commutes at like 20 minutes. Like I, I was spending three hours in the car every day. Yeah. That's brutal. Like, and I'm not, not to say like, that's what we're supposed to go back to. I don't would never wish that on anyone, but I, I left there cause I was so miserable. I took a 40% pay cut to go to Glassdoor and my mental health came. Like, like I was working out every day at Glass. Like I could work out in the middle of the day at Glassdoor. Like everyone work, there was cool. Yeah. It was like the, the catered food, but I, you know, I wasn't making the same kind of money. I, I admittedly yeah. like I got bored there fairly quickly. I, I truly believe, and this isn't like a knock on, on glass door. This is more just like the reality, a, a, like a high schooler could have done the job I was doing. We were selling ads. Like we were selling, Hey, you put this amount of money in, like there's a bidding system and like you get clicks. Like that's how yeah. it works. Sa like Salesforce, Oracle, there's 40 people on my team, like sales engineers, architects, like different salespeople selling different products. It's highly, highly technical. And so those so sales processes, 18 months, I was a BDR. And then I went yeah. into like, a I was going into cloud. Yeah. Cloud A. I should have stayed. I, one of my biggest regrets was not actually not staying at Oracle, which yeah. I feel like blows a lot of people's minds. That it was right at the mind, beginning of the cloud, the cloud yeah. movement. Okay. Um, and cloud was, Were you were teaching remember? people what cloud was. Yeah. Remember those days. Yeah. Yeah. It was. And, but it was like, <laughs> you were getting comp seven X on every dollar you sold in cloud. And this is when the world was shifting to cloud. Like this is when AWS was starting to rise. Like, you know, Azure, yeah. Microsoft Azure was starting to rise and like the money there was absolutely ridiculous. It's bananas. And I wish I had stayed there. I just kind of got under the, oh, I, I, in fact, the reason I left was because my manager, the guy who hired me in the first place was leaving. He's like, yo, come with me. I'm going to get you the promotion. I'm going to get you the money. We'll do all this thing. That happens all the time. He was gone probably like four months after me. We still laugh about, like, he's still a good friend of mine. We still laugh about like, God, remember that place? It was fucking and, so and Tales all this time. Tales right. all this time. Yeah. But Glassdoor was great. Glassdoor was chill made less money, but my life was just better. I was healthier. Yeah. I was all across the board, kind of better spot to go back all the way to our original conversation. Like Glassdoor, we always were sold. We're being paid Glassdoor pay transparency, right? Like we knew we were getting paid 15 to 20% under market. We knew that, but we're like, okay, we're like, we're like balance. We're going to, we're going to IPO. They were selling us on the IPO pretty yeah. hard. We yeah. Glassdoor was blowing up. Like we really believed that. And then right I left right after we got acquired by uh, Recruit, which is a PE firm, which is basically a death sentence for any company oh, getting acquired by a PE I've firm. I've been there, yeah. And I think like I ended up walking away <laughs> with like five grand on top of so, so everything. Right. Life changing five money you were grand. working for. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. it was like 10 grand tax 40%, maybe six grand. So like <laughs> all that time, three years, learn, three yeah. and a half years for that. Yeah. So that was a harsh lesson to learn. I'm a little bitter yeah. about it, but like, yeah. I can't knock the fact that my life was pretty great at the time. At least there's that. And yeah. did you, did you feel like there were people like not 20 years old there too? Or, or was it pretty, pretty young? Like, was well, it pretty I was 20 years old. So yeah, I mean, yeah. I, you know, I was 20, 25. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being 20. It's pretty great. No, those are the best times. You know, you lot. could drink a lot, you could drink a lot <laughs> yeah. and be and okay. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so in that regard, it was a younger crowd. I mean, Oracle still had so many layers of people in the field sales guys were all in their fifties, sixties, like 
old school, old school guys. Uh, but the inside AE group was primarily young, 20s, in their 20s. So Glassdoor across the board was younger by a lot. So, you know, it was the classic progressive tech company with the game room and the catered lunch and like beautiful, beautiful office. But it also gave me space to create. Like the biggest thing is it gave me space and time to make stuff. Yeah. Like you were, you were actually recording your videos there, right? Yes. Yeah. I got in trouble eventually for doing it. Uh, they kind of, people kind of found out about it and it kind of became a thing. And then they were like, actually, oh, this is fine. You can do this. Just sign this waiver that you're not going to sue us and everyone who's acting in it has to sign a waiver. And you're not going to disparage us. Yeah, of course. I was never, I, I never outed the companies I was working for at the time. Like the number one Google search, where does Corporate Bro work? <laughs> Corporate Bro, really. This is before <laughs> people knew my real name. Bro. Yeah. yeah I, I didn't fair. have my real name out there because I didn't want to lose my job. That's uh, fair. That's but, fair. I did not you know, have one day same, they banned me. Yeah. But, um, but what you just said totally confirms what my suspicions were, which is like, essentially, I need to get myself into more of like an enterprise type company where they actually have like 50s and 60 year, year old people in the ranks and they're doing well and like killing it. Yeah. So, if you're going to sell yeah. something, sell something expensive. That's what I'll say. Right. Like, 100%. Just, yeah. you know, it's more technical. There's definitely a, a larger barrier to entry. It's going to take a little more ramp period for you to start closing those deals and making the money. But to me, yeah. that's where I would go if I was going back in for sure. That makes a ton of sense makes a ton of sense. Um, so tell me now, I watched Sales Are Dope. It was dope. It was really awesome. And Thanks. the production was super good. And I want to hear a little bit more about how you decided to go into that realm and what that whole experience was like. And, you know, tell me, tell me what you learned. Tell me what you're excited about coming out of that. Sure. Yeah. So for those who don't know, Sales Are Dope is an eight part we'll call it a web show, but it's produced at the quality of a, of a TV show. And I say produced at the quality of a TV show doesn't mean the acting or writing was the level of TV show, the production value, the technical pieces, it could go on Netflix tomorrow with zero work. Uh, so it was, it was shot at that, at that level. And I wanted it to be as good as it possibly could. And, and, and so that's what we did. Um, Sales are dope was a series that I've been kicking around probably for four years or something. I wrote and shot a pilot when I was in business school. That was so fucking bad, but it was a really expensive learning experience and something I, I couldn't have done without going through the effort and time to write something and shoot something and see what it looks like. You know, you, you can imagine the way actors, you can imagine the writing because you're writing it in your voice and you're writing it and you, you read it the way you want it to be read. But then when you put it in front of actors, like they take their own spin on it and like, that's how it's supposed to be. And it's cool to see things come to life. But this version of it sales are up the eight part series that's out that was just like a, a dream basically for a long time. I've wanted to move into longer form content. I want to be closer to TV and more traditional Hollywood comedy type stuff. That's like what I want to do. Not, not stand up or not social media. I want to like write on TV shows and act in TV shows. That's like the dream. And so this was my opportunity to do that. I, I if, fuck it, just do it yourself. Like if no one else is going to give you a chance, <laughs> do it yourself and see what you can learn and do. And, uh, you know, production took five weeks and then editing took a couple months and uh you know we realized you know originally we were writing it to be 22 minute episodes like network style shows but then i was like fuck are we gonna write eight of these episodes and then shoot them like we don't have the budget or the time to get eight episodes out there like if we're gonna make a proof point let's just take three of these cut them up and put them out as like smaller episodes so like you know there's That's a million things idea. i would fix but there's a million things I'd fix. Like the pacing's a little shitty at times. It starts a little bit slow. We really start to hit our strides. And like, I would say like episode six, seven, eight, you know, which is good, I guess, for a final like three episodes, you want it to kind of get better as you go. But, you know, you can kind of feel, watch like the first two episodes. That was actually one single episode. Three, four, five were one episode. Six, seven, eight were actually one supposed to be standalone episode. So, you know, there's a million things I would fix. There's a lot of things I want to do differently. Um, but we're it was one of those things. feel that way though. You know, totally. like there's no, there's no question that we're all our own worst critics. Like I thought it was freaking great. So thanks. Thanks for what it's yeah. worth. Um, oh, no, it's but... worth something. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> so, it was awesome. you know. and, and you had a lot of good jokes strewn throughout where I was like, Oh man, I got to get corpse take on like getting old in tech because you know, the nine 11 joke, for example, I was yeah. like, I was like spitting my drink out. I was laughing so hard. It was so yeah. good. Yeah, um, so, <laughs> was so that was a, good. that was a late edition. Like, that was a late edition. It yeah. was a brilliant addition, and then there was Thanks. like the, the like throwback to Hanson, which I mean, hilarious. yeah. There's some '90s. There's some like '90s kid or like 
millennial nostalgia in there for a hundred percent. And yeah. and I for one like really really appreciated that. So thanks. Uh, but I knew that that meant that like I was on to something with regard to like this being a cu- cultural touch point. Like the ageism and age bias in tech is like a real thing. Like people yeah. are joking about it all the time. Like I was called a dino at thirty seven. Like it's it's ridiculous. Like it's absurd. Thirty seven. It, You're thirty seven. Yeah. No, 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 I'm 40, but I was wow. called a dino at 37. Wow, you're 40? Shit. Mm-hmm. Well I know. I'm Congratulations. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, you're old. You're old as shit, but I I'm would not have known old. that. I would not have known that. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah, but I mean, Good work. It, it just, thank you. It, it gets uh, it gets late early, like really was something that resonated. I was like, what the hell? Like, how yeah, is someone calling this? Like, yeah. it, he was kidding, obviously. I mean, I hope that's obvious, but he was kidding. But I was yeah. like, dude people people think that and i looked around i was like wait i am one of the oldest people here that is insane yeah just, like we're the adults in the room kind of it's a thing <laughs> it's a thing uh yeah and i think it's weird i don't feel older at all i mean maybe my body hurts a little bit more than it normally does but like <laughs> i don't feel old i don't even feel culturally out of touch yet i mean right. maybe it's that i have to be aware of like what's happening on tiktok and like gen yeah. z and like i have to be kind of in that world But it is interesting because I think a lot of us probably still and always will have imposter syndrome. It's like, what do I have to teach anyone? Like, what the fuck? Like, I haven't even been doing this that long. But wait a second. Yeah, I kind of have. Like, I have a lot of shit to say. I I can teach a lot of people stuff. Yeah. Uh, So I don't know. I've always played younger. Like, I think I'm immature and I'm fine with it. I don't give a shit. That's kind of who I am. And so it works. But yeah, I mean, the age thing is real. Like, we had a character that we didn't end up putting in there who was supposed to be the, like, married with kids. Like who, who like oh. can't really party, who like always girl. has to go do something. Uh, it was a dude. It was a dude. <laughs> okay. so like, yeah, it was a dude. Cause I, I wasn't capable. It was two dudes writing this thing. Like I, I didn't feel like I could write a female <laughs> perspective, like particularly well. And that's another thing I would fix like, and will fix at some point is you, get a bigger you, you writer's room. Women. We have them. I mean, you, you had women in there. We got women there. They're around. <laughs> they're around. We got some diversity. Did you see them? Yeah. Dude, they're everywhere. It's everywhere. everywhere. Everyone's like, Finders. not, not real. Too white. Are not white enough. <laughs> not white enough. Not white enough. I don't buy it. Amazing. Um, Amazing. But those are all things you got to like consider, right? And so it's like you know we wanted this. Yeah, but you but can't just do everything. Is the other thing you can't do everything, and it's like sometimes you just want to stay on your real house. And I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. And totally. you did have other perspectives there too, so that's cool. But yeah, well, it's no, funny. I still get harassed about it in my like sketches. You do? And I'm like, yeah, oh yeah. People are like, where's the representation? I'm like. You're like, that's not First of all, I'm like, do. bitch, and I say that nicely. <laughs> like, I, my, this is my brother and my cousin. Like, I'm, I'm getting friends and family who are just like around on a Saturday to come shoot these with yeah. me. I don't, I'm not hiring actors and like going through a casting process for like diversity oh my on my God. sketches. That is so. Not funny. to say it's not important. That's not to diminish its importance. No. But like, what I'm doing is like, yo, I'm, I'm making social media like content, like posts. Like, you can't win. I mean, you live in San Francisco. A person I know from San Francisco recently told me that there's like this, this, uh, furry thing like furry movement have you heard of this thing like like you identify not as no. a male or a female <laughs> Ross is like got my tail on behind me <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. like, why well, do you think I'm what? sitting so upright yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. no I just graduated the triple XL tail so whatever <laughs> it's been a long time been working on it it takes practice uh yeah I mean like do furry in a skit for sure yeah like that. I mean there's a, a bunch of thing. weird shit here yeah, you know we got the Folsom sure. Street Fair like People rolling out in leather, just lots of leather. Uh, there's weird shit That's everywhere. That's less weird to me, though. Like, the furry th- I'm just, I can't really. Un- you anyway. should see these costumes. Oh, a lot boy. of dicks. Oh, a lot really? Of, uh, oh, yeah. Just like, oh, yeah. Just it's like hang? everything but the, yeah. Yeah, like oh. just covering everything. It's, yeah, it's, I'm talking like really? executioner mask. Like, I'm talking Ooh. like weird, kinky, yeah, shit that, and like, I'm not writing it off. I'm just trying anything once. Wow. They what? People, people are like bold enough to do it because you can't see their face behind the mask kind of thing. Oh, they'll do it with the, do it with the mask off too. They don't give a shit. Yeah. It's just like thousands it's, of people. It's a, wow. Sometimes I'm like, I've lived too long. What the hell? Wow. We, okay. we got kinks out here. We got kinks out here. We're not here to kink shame. It could be cool. Shit, no, no, I haven't okay. tried it. I'm down to try Everybody's it. Everybody's welcome here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's San Francisco in a nutshell. I mean, there's a bunch of weird shit here. I mean, you live in the Pac Northwest. Like, yeah, I mean, it's not, I, it's not I Portland, it. but. It's, like, it's, it's, yeah. yeah, it's close, but it's not. Yeah. I think we're like maybe one level up, whatever that means. I don't even know what that means, but yeah, I, mean, I would say one level up. Yeah. Yeah. Portland. Yeah. Yeah. Portland's, Portland's interesting. But anyway, yeah. So, um, where were we? We got off onto the furries topic. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, 
you were kink shaming. Um, that, 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 that was that was my fault. No, you were talking about like having the various. Pre- oh yeah, you were talking about representation of the sketches. Yeah, repre- like, representation of the sketches, and you were like, oh, we were gonna have a dude who like couldn't party anymore because he had a family. Was yeah. that not did, F- did Fister have a family? I don't remember him saying it. So he is technically married. We didn't really okay. go into the backstory. Like we again, like yeah. the, that was another piece. Like we just couldn't expand on the backstories. You don't have time. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't have time. And so all these other things we want to do. We want to get into Mickey's backstory. We yeah. want to get into Fister's backstory. Even Travis's. Like we hinted at Travis's a little bit. Katie's backstory. Like there's so many backstories that we So many good know, ones to explore. Yeah. And you know, it's so it's hard because you want people to like the characters. And I've gotten comments, people are like, I didn't like a single one of the characters. Like, fine. Like I get it. You what? know? Uh, no, I mean, like, I that's, I get, that's, I get, that's more of a them problem. I would, I would think. Yeah, yeah but I get, like, I get where they're like coming that you from. You didn't I, get so into the weeds with them, you mean? Yeah, which, which all they're doing is comparing us to major blockbuster shows. Which, like, <laughs> if you're putting us in that like realm and category, then yeah, we're yeah. probably worse. Like, you know, <laughs> like just a couple dudes trying to make a make a you know make a TV show. Like, we're, we have no awesome. Hollywood background, so I, I was just honored to be compared. You know, it it was awesome. So anyway, Thanks. I I am happy that you guys pulled it off i mean it sounds like it was no small feat and uh you i mean i thought it was really well written and really funny and again i just i loved some of those jokes so much they just really they definitely hit home for me as a Thanks. as a geriatric millennial it was uh it was huge so um yeah you only so got a few years me. left so i'm glad you enjoyed something I know, you know you, i don't know too. if you'll be around for season two the end but year, you know I yeah <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, we'll see. You know, it's so freaking weird. Like you said, I don't feel old at all, and yet suddenly I was like, "Wait, I'm I'm a protected class now." Like what? <laughs> what AARP, this? it's calling. I know. It's no, call- literally, I've gotten I've gotten ads for AARP. I've gotten ads for not joking. Like right after I turned forty, I got an ad on like the Seattle Times or something, and it was like. <laughs> It's like cremation services. And I was like, really? Are you <laughs> yeah. fucking kidding me? Like, come on now. Like, yeah, is, book now, though. Lock in that deal. It's just a salesperson. It's just a marketing lead. You could be a lead. You know? You could be a hot lead. Literally. We're a hot you know? lead. Yeah. Yeah, That's exactly. Amazing. So, okay. I'd love to ask my guests how, how old they are. Because I think that we should all, like, I think we should own it. I think we should shout our age, which also kind of sounds like, you know, shout your age sounds like shout your rage, which I also love. Because, uh, you know, both work for me. But, you know, Do you know how old I, I am? I don't know how old you are, but I'm guessing you might. You're a millennial, right? Like me, like yeah. we're same, uh-huh. but you're not forty, right? I'm, no. I'm older than you. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Sorry, correct. Sorry, it's really cool. Actually, Obviously, up here, it's really cool up here. <laughs> Obviously, I mean, look at us. I'm so fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I like didn't shower. I'm like, I need to shave. Like, I just look <laughs> homeless. Is kind of what I do, though. Don't I do it. like the homeless Don't look. I, mean, uh, I am 34. Okay, I'm 34. Okay. Yeah, young, yeah. young pup. Yeah. 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 yeah, but you're technically you're an '80s baby, right? Yeah, yeah, I can't. Yeah, '89. Yeah, yeah, you last, are. Okay. Last, last, the yeah, Brohikins. Like, yeah, like like Taylor Swift or something, right? Wasn't she '89 or was that just is her she, album? Is she '89? I'm assuming that is she was '80. Like, is she '34? Sure, because why else would she name an album '1989? That doesn't make any sense. That's true. To me. It has to that's, be like the year of her birth. Like I'm putting the line and say like '1989. Okay, she's 33. Yeah, she snuck in December okay. 13th, 1989. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank God for the internet. Why does she you feel know? so much younger than me? Um, God. Maybe it's just her, her angst. Like, she just shows her, her angst all over the place. <laughs> it's the songwriting. We, right, we she's my it, height too. <sighs> Didn't need to look oh. at this. <laughs> she's 5'11". That's tall. That's tall. That is really tall. She's I would, tall. I'd love to be 5'11". No. It's, it's, it's yeah, happen. well, it's, okay. it's not all it's cracked up to be, I'll tell you that. Because yeah. every time you tell people, they're like, yeah, you're they're just... like, oh, yeah, 5'10", five, 5'8". Five, yeah, exactly. It's like, no, I should be saying I'm six feet tall. And if I said six feet tall, you're like, you're probably like 5'11". I should probably just say exactly. six feet tall. I feel like you can't win. Just yeah, like I'm just, just going to tell everyone I'm six can't feet freaking, tall. Can't freaking win. Um, okay, so Corp, you are still very far from protected class status. But like, as you think about... And, and <laughs> Affluent <laughs> white heterosexual male? What, what gives you that idea? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, one day you too, like everybody else, which is like the yeah. weird kind of gross it, beauty of all of this. It's perverse. Like we are all in this together. This is the one thing that unites us is, you know, the longer we live, the the more we will face this marginalization and this prejudice. It's like real. It's going to be your first welcome. It's going to be your first ism as a white dude, right? Um, uh, yeah. I cannot wait for my first ism. <laughs> I'm stoked. <laughs> I'm really excited. That, like wait what is this shit like oh, yeah man. exactly it's gonna be really I, good you know i mean there's anti-semitism but i've actually never experienced any That's, of that 
that's a that's an ism for sure. That's it's one an I, ism, I'm but... as waspy as they come. So I've not experienced it, but like, yeah, it's a, it's a thing. You can claim it's a that. thing. It's out there. Not you um, haven't experienced it though. It's good. Uh, yeah. No, wait, what was the question? Cut out for a second there. I said, I'm, I said, I'm glad you haven't experienced it, though. Oh, yeah. yeah that yeah, would suck. Course. That would yeah. suck. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I look forward to my first ism. I'm, I can't <laughs> wait to write about it. Yeah, Probably do yeah. like a book or something. Yeah, you should. You should. Like My first like, ism, 50 years like, old. <laughs> you know? oh my God. But, but it might start earlier. I don't know. Maybe not for you because you like kind of wisely moved out of tech. And now you're kind of like, oh, you're also kind of doing stuff with bravado, right? And Scratchpad. And like you're, you're doing like tech adjacent stuff and yeah. working with tech companies, but not within them, which Correct. I think is like very much an admirable path, one such path that I might want to embark on similarly. But like, do it. that's, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I guess I'm, I guess this is my attempt. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> if I choose to go back into tech, it'll 100% be the reason I get my next position. Oh, yeah. Because people will be like, look at us. We hired that old broad. We are so <laughs> yeah. inclusive. Yeah. You know? yeah. She's so fucking like, old. Like, oh. <laughs> totally, totally. So, so like walk me through, I know you're not there yet. And so this is all like just a, an imagination thing, but like imagine being 40, imagine being 50 as Kill me. cork. Kill, Kill me. Kill me. I'm Kill done. Me. Just get yeah. me out of here. Throw me into yeah. a volcano. Please. <laughs> I'm out. On the big yeah. island. That's where yeah, the big island. Go, right? Yeah. The big island. Yeah. Throw me into Mona yeah. Kea <laughs> and we're good. Yeah. Okay. So if you don't go that route, if you go like the more like embracing positive route which you know like that's a choice others a choice as well but like tell me what do you as like the corp persona think about getting older and then what do you as as like you ross think about getting older? i think i <laughs> arrogant here i <laughs> oh, think i it. i think you won't get old I no no i will i think i play better old actually i think i will play better old i think i've always kind of been I've always found myself kind of in the, I'll call it a influential slash like leadership positions at a younger age where it was the imposter syndrome of like, I'm, I don't feel like old enough to be in this position. Like, why is it, why is it me? And it feels weird and almost inauthentic in, in certain ways. And I think, I think my, that sort of, I know I said I was immature earlier, but I think there's like a level <laughs> of self-awareness. Well, self, I mean, I was going to go back to maturity. I think it's just like self-awareness of like, this is how life is. Like, this is how it goes. And I think kind of the things like the mentorship positions I'm in, the like captainship positions I'm in, like I, it plays better as I get older for me, because I think the people will take it more, take it more seriously. Um, I don't want to get older. Like I still play competitive baseball oh, and like, we've got a 19 year old on our team. Who's just very good. And I'm, you know, I'm 34 and like the, the best players in the league now are, we're kind of over the hill. I mean, we're, you know, we're still in first place. We're still sick, but like, you know, it's, uh, I'm starting for the first time, like even in business school playing pickup basketball, like I used to be the fast guy who could guard anyone. And I was just getting blown away by like these younger 20 year old guys. And it was the first time I actually really felt my step was gone. Like I, there was nothing I could do. I could play intelligent. I was like, damn, like there's nothing I can do right now. Like this is the first time I really feel age and it's fine. It's, it's fine. Right. Like I think, that's the reality. I mean, it better be fine. Otherwise it's going to be rough. <laughs> Every day is going to get more and more rough. I mean, I'm the oldest I've ever been right now. It's like, know. you know, know. so I, I don't know. I think there'll be a lot of things there. I don't think corporate bro works. Like if we're going to take it back to like the topic here, I don't know if corporate bro, I've been trying to move away from the word bro, just generally speaking for a million reasons. You can guess them all in, in tech. Um, <laughs> but I think there is something there that I can evolve to or switch to. And it may be even a little bit more on the serious side of things. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, I, I'm not looking for, I don't want to quit baseball, but every year I get closer and, you know, injuries and I try to stay in as good a shape as I can to, to keep up, but like, it's harder and harder to keep up. It's just what it is, you know, but that's fine. That's fine. I mean, that's the thing though, <laughs> with sports, it's like you have physical limitations and changes in your body and like breakdowns and muscles and bones or whatever. But so it makes sense that you have like a put out to pasture date. That's like a little bit earlier than you would imagine. Right. But when it comes to the workforce, it doesn't make any sense to me where no, it's like, I don't feel as sharp. Yeah. yeah. No, I feel better. Like I'm so much better than I was like when I started totally. out, it's just like way more confident, know what I'm doing, like have, that self-worth and whatnot and then can just go into a situation and be like oh I, I can do this whereas 
you know, talk to me 15 years ago and I'd be like, Oh, I don't know. It's just, uh, you know, it's, yeah. just, it's so different, but um, it, it strikes me as, is so bizarre that like we have that parallel in tech. I think it's more acute than other industries. Like ageism is for sure a thing across all industries and some are worse than others, but in tech, it's like, it's like this thing that shouldn't be. And I'm trying yeah. to like crack why it is. Like there's a reason you guys put those jokes in to sales or dope. You're, there's a reason you joke about turning 30 on court pro. Like it's a thing people. It's real. No, it is. It is a thing. And I think like, like you said, it's acutely obvious in, in tech. And I think there's, there's a few reasons. It's one, they don't want to pay people more. They want to keep like a young kind of grind vibe around people will work harder. Like they you can push them more. They're not, they don't have, uh, they don't see the world for much more than, like their job and like what they do on the weekend. Whereas most mature adults like have other shit they like to do and realize that their job isn't their whole identity. And that's how it goes. You know, I do think leadership and experience is often under or underappreciated and can be a huge difference maker in tech and motivating people and like giving them perspective and I, and, and wise words, whatever it may be, even almost catharsis and therapy to the younger folks who are like, why am I doing this? What is happening? You're just like, Oh, you're finally asking the right questions. Like, <laughs> You know, so um, I don't know there. It is it is a problem. It's it's all it's pervasive kind of all over the place. Um, it depends on the role and what you're the cost, the, what you cost. And like yeah. there's there is business pieces to it. Not not that they're they're right. They're not right. They're right. Not, like, you know, ethically right, I would say. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a problem. I, I haven't given it much thought for myself, mostly because if, if my boss fires me. Cool. Well, also if I'm, my boss fires me, it's me firing me. And so like, I, you know, I don't, I don't have to like experience it too much, but yeah, it's you know, um, I think about it. I think about like, what does corporate bro look like in 10 years? And I'm like, it doesn't yeah. look like this. It doesn't look like corporate bro. I don't know. Yeah. It probably isn't corporate bro realistically. So I, I don't know where it goes, but it, it is very much in my mind and why I feel a sense of urgency to get as much done now before it feels inauthentic and weird. And I get too far yeah. away from the topic at hand. Totally makes sense. It must be weird too, because I'm sure people completely conflate like who you are as Ross with corporate bro all the time. Like all the time. you, right? And you you probably have to like code switch into like, oh, I'm seeing someone like who recognizes me, and I have to be like, yeah, dude, like that thing that you do. What's it called? The scoop and uh, butter. Yeah, scoop and <laughs> butter. Like, scoop and butter. Yeah, scoop mad butter. butter. I'm not going to attempt that. I don't think I can scoop butter. But I mean, that must be kind of challenging. I would imagine. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that happens all the time. It's exactly what you said. Like people recognize me and they're like corp on the street. And like, you know, it depends on who it is and I'll throw them a little, little scoop. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it is interesting. Like, you know, people want to, <laughs> people want to buy me shots and it's like, yeah, oh, I bet they do. And it's like, that's so cool. And nice of you. Easily. Yeah. Like get some well whiskey and I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> like more if I, I, I did fireball recently cause it was given to me and I was like, Oh Fuck. Like, oh my god yeah fireball my fireball ball days are way past over. all of a sudden i was back at oracle blacking out of bar none oh uh and That's like amazing. but yeah i think uh, and part of what i think a lot about too is like the brand of ross versus corp and i and i want i corp is kind of like what i'm hoping to become which is the combination of ross and corporate bro like corporate bro is what a lot of people take me as ross is like what a lot of people don't know me as and like the people who are close to me do and then corp is kind of like what's the mature version? Like, well, let's take away the bro, right? And let's just be corp. I, like a lot of people call me corp. I like the name. I think it's kind of synonymous and bonds or binds the two things that I've, I've really focused on. And so, you know, it's a matter of putting content. It, it's all a PR exercise. It's all just like consistently putting out content and the types of things that make people see corp versus like the bro side and say, yeah, I'm the guy who plays corporate bro. Most people call me corp. My name is Ross. My mom calls me Ross, but like, you know, <laughs> I play corporate bro. I play that ridiculous character. So I love that. People struggle with that for sure. Yeah. No, it must be really super weird for you. I can only imagine. <laughs> well, it's worse. Like you talk about the ageism. For me, it's more of the the broism. That's my main ism. Is people <laughs> like people, I mean companies, like they don't want to work with me. They get nervous. They don't people who don't know who I am, they're like, we're not gonna bring a guy named Corbin Bro in to speak. Really? Like, why would we do that? <laughs> like have you, have you seen our latest D E and I thing? Like right. we're not doing yeah, totally. Right. And it's hard because then I have the then I once if I can have a conversation with these people and they're like, Oh, you're nothing like corporate bro i'm like i yeah, know fucking right. shit <laughs> like <laughs> like i'm an actor like I, I this is like all a persona like this is an online oh persona God. you know i don't sit there and say everything i do on that is is facts or even correct corporate bro is in off, most ways like what you don't do like in so many ways yeah, not like exactly or it's satire oh you know satire like, people, like satire it's like right <laughs> over their head so 
<laughs> some of the most simple ones too are so fantastic. Like the one where you're walking down that hotel hallway and you're playing that like Oh yeah, Gavin DeGraw. Love, like yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, after advising the CEO blacked out the next I was yeah, dying. Yeah. I was laughing so hard because we we all know people who have done that. Like I've done that. that. That's all. I've done that. I've done that. Like, Here's what you need to do. If I were running the business, if I were yeah, that's the yeah. enemy. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, <laughs> I remember the bottom of a of a bar in Chicago. I was going off on the CEO <laughs> about just like our brand and like we need to be like more edgy, dude. <laughs> and like oh, me, I'm probably sitting there and like God. feel like I'm in a suit, just like being so eloquent in the reality. I'm just like, yeah, you gotta be better brand. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh my God. I wish I could be in that CEO's shoes for all. Like, I mean, yeah, we've all seen it. That's, that was, that was a really awesome moment. But I have to tell you, even though you hear things from people who are like, this needs to be more inclusive in the bro thing, but like, I have so many friends who are ladies who are like, oh my God, corporate bro cracks me up. Like, everyone thinks it's hilarious. So I think people just need to be a little bit. Well, they have wonderful taste and they like, sound like beautiful people. They, they are fantastic <laughs> beings. They're like, wait, what? So many, many women also follow you. So I don't know put that in your cap or whatever what the term is that sounds yeah. bad I was like, hey, I maybe cut this episode bad. so you just like say yeah. that line first <laughs> yeah many ladies follow you ross yeah, and they're gonna be like there. and then i can tell how that'll be misconstrued i already know how that's getting misconstrued <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're, we're both canceled after the episode yeah um furries too furries um that's, so I okay i also wanted to get <laughs> i also wanted to get your take on you know like intergenerational workforce stuff like I know you work a lot with corporate Natalie, who is decidedly Gen Z. I, I remember listening to one of your other podcasts with you and Ben Gold, and you're talking about how she like taught you TikTok, which cracked me up because I too was like, what the, what, like I haven't even tried it yet. So, and I don't even know if it's worth it. So, um, but it sounds like it is because apparently that stuff works. You just got to be there. You got to be there. Yeah, if you're playing sure. in the social media game, you just, you got to be there. Oh, Okay. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but tell me a little bit about like your take, maybe as Ross versus as corporate, like uh, intergenerational workforce dynamics, and how you work with like the boomers versus the Gen Zers, and whatever the hell the next one is, which I literally don't know. So a, I don't know. I, don't, I actually don't know what it is. I uh, briefly, no, no, no. I do have a hard stop in four minutes. Oh yeah, um, yeah okay. I have, I, have yeah. An inter- I have to talk to the Wall Street Journal about creator stuff. Oh my gosh! Oh, I'm yeah, so excited for you. It's not as important yeah. as this, but they'll, no, they'll understand. No, um, yeah, you're right. Just be like, oh, as long as it gets later early, they're like, well, I'm sorry, but yeah, they're like, holy shit, we didn't realize. We'll wait. We'll wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> One day, Ross, I have dreams. I have dreams. Yeah. Anyway, um, so tell me about intergenerational workforce yeah. stuff. For me, it's it's not terribly difficult. Like I, I think I am very self. Uh, I'm big into self, like self depreciation. Like I, I, I like, that's that. And, and you play that either way you play with the younger generation. Like, sorry, I'm old. Like, I just don't get it. And the, and the other generation, I'm like, yeah, y'all old. Like, you just don't get it how it is to be so youthful. Like, <laughs> and for me, I can like shit on myself. I'm like, sorry, I just don't, I don't know as much as you guys do. Or like, and it ends, ends up working. All right. Like, you know, Natalie is like, great in terms of the, the energy and like, you know, she's 25 or 26. She's super young. Um, but she's got the motor, which is like, which is great. And I'm like, yeah, I can feed off this. And we have like very good banter. And I think like, you know, in a lot of ways, she is a female version of me. Like, we just don't shut the fuck up. Like we are just the worst <laughs> together. You know, it's just no one else can get a word in because we're just kind of going back and forth. But like with the older generation, it's interesting because a lot of my humor actually plays better there. Like the edge of your humor actually plays better with an older generation who is a little less like progressive, like like a little less like ready to find the what's wrong with what I'm saying. Like so many people, if you're going to go watch comedy, like watch with best intent, like understand that's like satire parody. Like, like this isn't the way the world, like this commentary on the world. They watch comedy that way. A lot of Gen Z and like whatever, like we said is before that watches like ready to be upset. Like, but try to figure out, like pick it apart. You yeah, know, they're ready and, to pounce. It's like, how do we get this next person? It's like you say right. one word wrong and you're canceled. Yeah, right. And I'm, I'm, I'm like exaggerating a little bit. Like not everybody yeah. does that, but in, on social media, that's what happens a lot. You yeah, know, I got eviscerated for making fun of bicyclists recently, but Are I was perpetuating kidding? stereotypes of bicyclists in a story when I was talking shit about a bicyclist oh, who didn't stop at God. a fucking stop sign. So like, wow. that's where we're at. Like we're a little soft, you know. We're a little like, soft. Let's, let's, let's Your let's... words, they're the right words. <laughs> I say it, but they're we're soft as fuck. Soft yeah, I guess I didn't realize the connotation of that. Wow. Okay. And I edit that out too. Um, no, uh, okay. Keep awesome. It. Yeah. I think we'll, I think we'll keep it. We yeah. just gotta be real. Um, so before you run off to the wall street journal, is there anything that 
people don't ask you that you wish they would? That they wish they asked. I, I think like people don't talk enough about, you know, they like the grind it takes to kind of get to a point. Like for seven years, I didn't make a single dollar doing this. And like, wow. I really did do it because I enjoyed it. And it's a nights and weekends like project. And so many people give up on their passions and their projects on the side because like the reality is, you can get caught up in the results of the work, but like, if you don't actually enjoy it, it's so cliche and lame, but like nobody, like I enjoy writing and I enjoy acting and I enjoy doing it. Even if no one was watching it, that's how it all started. Um, and so there's a lot of mental side of like content creation. Like I go to therapy, like I have to do it the same way I have to work out. Like if I don't, I'll be miserable. And that's just to manage like what I do for a living that's just what it is. And so there's a lot of downside. People are like, Oh, you must get so much free shit and like make so much money. And like, like, sure. But it's not without a cost. Like there's always a cost. And, and I think that's one of the things that gets overlooked a lot and like what it took to get there, you know? Totally. So. And I you think, learn that stuff over time. You learn how you can cope with everyday realities of whatever it is you're doing. And that, that comes with you know, right. age. Right. And experience. Exactly. Exactly. Amazing. Ross, thank you so much. It was of awesome course. to have you here. This is so much fun. And uh, say what's up to the Wall Street Journal for me, will you? I will. Thank you, Mo. All I appreciate right. you. Till right. next time. Take care. Till next time. Yeah.